Good morning, my friends. Pastor John Kylo coming to you from home today. Uh, obviously, the weather has us uh, stowed in and uh, iced in, so to speak. So I did want to reach out to you today, though, since we weren't going to be able to have service at church and just do a little devotion. And again, just tell you how much I love you and appreciate all of you. <clears throat> and hopefully you are warm, dry, and uh, enjoying this morning to you today in my devotion about decisions, decisions, and you will find that in 2 Kings chapter 7, uh, verses 3 through 10. Let's go ahead and read that. There were four leprous men at the entry of the gate, and they said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? If we say, let us enter the city, the famine is in the city, then we shall die there. But if we sit here, we die also. Now come, let us fall into the camp of the Syrians. Assyrians. If they spare our lives, we will live. And if they kill us, we will die. So they rose at twilight to enter the camp of the Assyrians. And when they came to the edge of the camp of the Assyrians, there was no one there. For the Lord had caused the Assyrians camp to hear the sounds of chariots, horses, and even the sound of large army. So they said to one another, Listen, the king of Israel has hired the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come against us. So they got up and ran away into the twilight and abandoned their tents, their horses, and their donkeys. And the camp remained just as it was, and they ran for their lives. Then these leprous men came to the edge of the camp and went into the one tent. And they ate and drank and carried off silver, gold, and clothes, and went and hid them. Then they went back, entered another tent, and carried off things from there, and went and hid them. Then they said to one another, We are not doing right today. This is a day of good news. If we are silent and wait until the morning light, we will be found guilty. Let us go now and enter the city and tell the king's household. So they went and called to the gatekeeper of the city, and they told them, We come to the camp of the Assyrians, and there was no one there. There was no sound of a man's voice, only horses tied and donkeys tied, and tents as they were. It is uh, uh, Valentine's Day, and uh, it's such a blessing to be able to come to you on that day. Uh, but I'm not going to speak to you on Valentine's, on Valentine's message, nor am I going to speak to you or continue in my sermon series on the Beatitudes. Instead, I'm going to do a little devotion on this story found in 2 Kings about four lepers who found themselves in a tight spot. I find in this story... Uh, that when the world around us is full of rage and the devil would love to say to, to lay siege to us by filling us up with fear, that for the Christ follower, those, that, those of us that call ourselves Christians, there is great hope. There must be great hope. Please remember the answer to all the world's uh, problems is and always has been Jesus Christ. Even though there are bad things that are happening, and even though evil may have a foothold in the world, there is one promise that we can hold on to today. There is a God, and Jesus Christ is his name. In John chapter 14, verse 27, it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. There is no guarantee this morning that any of us will be safe today or tomorrow. But for the Christ follower, we have the promise of a Savior who has said that he will be with us always, even to the end of the age. What great comfort. What wonderful promise that we're being given. In our little story this morning, we see that Syria is at war with Israel, and they have come to the city of Samaria to lay siege to it. During this time period, cities had walls around them to protect them. A common practice of the time was to surround a city, cutting off all supplies, and simply to wait until the people surrendered or they starved to death. Desperation was so great that two women had newborn babies, and they had entered into an agreement that one would kill her baby and they would eat it. I know it's horrible. It sounds horrible. But this is what happened during these times of ancient cities where they were under great siege. With the understanding that the next day they would kill the other baby and eat it. However, the next day, the second woman had hidden her baby and refused to kill it. Do you remember the story? Beyond our imaginations. 
Yet it is recorded in the Bible to show the desperation that the people were going through. Just so we understand how bad things were, a donkey's head sold for four pieces of silver, which during this time was considered a great deal of wealth. In Jewish culture, the, the donkey's head was considered unclean and would not, uh, be, and would not provide much meat. Uh, even a pint of dove dung sold for five pieces of silver, if we can imagine. So when the mother had killed her baby to eat, complained to the king about the breach of contract, he, he was incensed. How could this possibly happen? He was so upset that he began to blame Elisha, the prophet, and he proclaimed that before the end of the day was over with, he would have Elisha's head cut off. Wow. We're not told exactly why the king was so upset with Elijah. However, it's not uncommon for prophets to warn the kings of problems. So maybe this is why he was upset with Elisha. Elisha had not given him any warning of what was coming. Or maybe he just needed someone to blame. Elisha was in Samaria, meeting with elders when the siege took place. So the, so the king sent a messenger to get Elisha. The king confronts Elisha, and Elisha tells the king that by tomorrow at this same time, fine flour and barley would only cost you a penny. does not seem very likely that things would turn around that quickly, does it? Now about this time, there were four leprous men who were at the city gate, and because of their condition, sick and diseased, they are rejected, humiliated, and embarrassed. They are not permitted to go inside the city. If people on the inside of the city were desperate, what must these four men who were shunned by society, what must they be going through? Well, these four men are faced with a dilemma, aren't they? They understand how society viewed them. They understood the nature of their disease, and they felt the need to get a decent meal. They had three options that day. Go back into the city and die with everyone else in the famine. Or sit at the city gate and do nothing and die from hunger. Or go forward, do something, go into the enemy's camp. If they kill us, then it is a quick death, but maybe they will be merciful. What they did not realize, nor had they any knowledge of, is that God had already sorted out the enemy, and all they had to do was walk into the camp and become the owners of all that was theirs. All they had to do was take the plunder and not beg for it. I'd, I would love to tell each and every person that's listening to me today, and especially my family at Angle Lake Neighborhood Church, that we have decisions to make. We have decisions to make today. We have decisions to make just like these four men have to make. And these are decisions that will encourage us and keep us and hold us for the near and distant future. The very first one is, and for every person listening, is that we can withdraw. We can retreat back into a lifestyle that we came from because life has just been unfair or it's too hard or there we will find spiritual famine and eventual death. We find ourselves saying things like, I wish it was different. I wish things didn't work out the way they worked out. And because of these things, we... we cop an attitude, so to speak, or we get discouraged, or we allow these things to keep us hindered. I, I, wish, <clears throat> I wish I could tell you that this morning that everything was going to be perfect and it's going to work out just the way you want it to work out. I, I wish I could tell every person here today that you'll never experience pain again. I, I wish I could promise you that you will all be safe and that your families will be safe. But I can't make those promises because they're not within me to make. But I can tell you this. Retreat is not the answer either. Hiding under a rock, hoping things will get better, is not the answer. Refusing to simply get out of bed will not help. Or we can stay here is another decision that needs to be made today. We can just stay where we are, satisfied with the status quo. This too will lead to spiritual death. God has so much more to give us and to do through us. We cannot just stay behind these four walls because it's safe here and we are comfortable. 
I, I read someplace where the biggest hindrances for many people are the three C's, comfort, cost, and conviction. For some, it's just too much of the first two and not enough of the third. Or the third choice that the lepers had to make that day, and we have to make the same, is we can get desperate. Throwing ourselves on God and crying out to Him to change us and to heal us, to do something with us that we haven't let Him do before or for a very long time. The lepers didn't imagine, didn't realize that God had spoken. Imagine yourself as one of these lepers outside the city. What are you going to do? We can say to ourselves that we can't, or we can say to ourselves that we can. We know what the Word of God states and what the Word of God tells us. Let us stand on that Word and go forward in it. God has spoken, and we have the very Word of God for us today. The lepers knew that their enemies had resources. They knew if they went into the city, they would die. And if they stayed where they were, they were going to die. So the, really the only sensible thing for them to do was to go over into the enemy's camp and see what would happen. If the Assyrians killed them, then they had lost nothing. But if they spared them, they would live. They had nothing to lose and everything to gain. They did not know what was waiting for them. And when they arrived at the camp, God had already performed the miracle. They had no knowledge of what Elisha had predicted, but they decided to go anyway. What would have happened if they had not gone? Maybe many more people would have died before the king sent out a patrol to see about the terms of surrender. My friends, I tell you this morning, God performs miracles so that his name will be lifted and his glory will fill the earth. And the process of blessing falls on those who are the receivers of miracles. If not for the leper's desperation and decision, most, if not everyone, would have died within those city walls. Elisha had spoken the word of God. The miracle had already happened. It was only waiting on the lepers to go and see what was for the plunder. As I look around our cities today, those that we have contact with in our nation SeaTac, Tequila, Des Moines, Berrien, South King County, Washington State, the United States of America, the world. They are like the enemy's camp, just waiting for a handful of broken but healed people to take the miracle that God has promised. What is the worst anyone can do to you? I, I, I get it and I understand. The world is scary and things are scary. And no one wants to put themselves in danger. And no one wants to put themselves in a place where they will be criticized. But I make you a promise this morning. I just make you this promise. Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. He will go with you and give you the ability to be what he has called you to be. He will put the words in your mouth and he will speak into your heart. Now for some of us, we have great giants in our lives. <clears throat> and they do stop us time and time again from doing and being what God has wanted us to be. And I get it. I understand that these giants can be tremendous and hard and difficult. But I want every person to understand today also that it's not the giant that stops you. It's the fear of the giant that stops you. Oh, if I could just speak into one heart today, one life today, and say to you and encourage you and help you and speak into your life, it's this. It's time for God's people to rise up. God can take anyone and turn them into a vessel he can use to save a nation. We just have to rise up to the call of God on our lives. Simply go and preach and see people saved. I, I, I tell you, my friends, it is time. It is time that we spoke the word of God. L listen to me clearly. Listen to the, the heart of your pastor this morning. When I tell you that we cannot get stuck in what's going on around us to such a degree that it 
keeps us paralyzed or it keeps us completely focused on something else instead of what God wants us to be focused on. Oh, there are so many distractions in the world today. So many. And distractions that can seem like a worthy cause. Distractions that can seem like we need to be a part of that. But if we are not very careful, we will let the distractions fade out what is really important in our lives. We get, we get stuck on the cause, not looking to see what the answer is. And oh, my friends, the answer is Jesus Christ. And he lifted up to lead someone to Jesus, to speak the truth of Jesus into somebody's hearts and life. And to do it with grace and to do it with courage and to do it in such a way that it will minister to them, oh, what a blessing it will be. Yes, many of us have giants, but let's not be afraid of the giants anymore. It's time for us to rise up. God can take anyone, anyone, and turn them into a vessel that he can use to save a nation. Oh my goodness. We just have to rise up to the call of God on our lives. Go and preach. And see people saved. The lepers acted out of desperation. Their reason for going into the enemy's camp was they were hungry. My friends, I declare to you today that when people get desperate for the things of God, miracles will happen. I believe that. Battles will be won. This is a God thing, my friends. Listen, I, I tell you that there are many that, that are praying. But oh, my friends, let's pray. For revival, let's pray that God will save a nation, that God will save a city, that God will save a people, that God will save our families. Battles will be won, I believe it. This is a God thing. Fear says no. Apathy says wait. Weakness says it can't be done. Personal weakness says I don't want to do it. Courage will always say Yes, yes. What did the lepers do? Well, they entered the first tent and saw that no one was there, filled their bellies with all the food that was there, took all they could carry and hid it. <laughs> and you know, that might sound funny, but who of us would probably not do the same thing if we were in the shoes of these leprous men? They entered the second tent and did the same thing ate till they were stuffed, took what they could take, and hid it. Then they came to their senses after they had their bellies full and a change of clothes and had hid enough wealth for themselves that they would never have to beg again. They realized that the deliverance was for everyone, not just for them. What an important message for us today. What an important message for us today. That there is great spiritual wealth for every one of us. But it's not just for us. It is for those that we come in contact with. Let's not hide our light under a bushel. Let's let our light shine on a hill. Despite how they had been treated, they just couldn't go on without telling. Now think about that too. They'd been shunned by their community. They had been shunned by the people, their very own people, because of their leprous disease. Yet they didn't let how they had been treated, praise God, keep them from telling the truth. They did what any of us would have done, I believe. They went to the city to tell the city of the good news. There is such a fight for the lives of this town and this nation. There is such a fight. That's going on right now. But all oh, my friends, I tell you that no matter how hard the fight is going on, we have the good news. And we need to make sure that we're proclaiming it because that is what will truly save lives. There, there, is, no, there is no fix for rotting and decaying world except for the blood of the Lamb. God's word is sufficient and Jesus is enough. 
And if we try to squeeze anything else into that without truly presenting Jesus as Lord and Savior, then what's the point? What's the point? Jesus saves. And we need to make sure that message is promoted to the world today. The four lepers underwent a wonderful change. From outcasts, they became the messengers of hope and dying people. They went from beggars to being wealthy. They also had changed the history of all that were behind the city walls. They would have stayed in and starved, but they went out after the miracle and had their needs met. When the king responded to the good news of salvation and sent some of his men into the enemy's camp, the word that, the word that was spoken by Elisha came to pass. So, where does that leave us on this Sunday morning, this snowy Sunday morning when most of us can't get out? Well, it leaves us with a decision. Decisions, decisions. To go back, to stay where we are, or to get up and go see the miracle that God has already worked upon the people of this town. We can't wait on it coming to us. We have to go to it. What the lepers gained was food, clothing, and wealth. And something much better, they saved the lives of thousands. If we learn from the lepers this day, then we can have a similar attitude. It is time to plunder the enemy's camp. I tell you, I'm determined in my heart today not to go backward, nor just to sit and wait. But I am determined to go pick myself up and do exactly what God wants me to do, even if it means standing up to a few giants or invading armies. We have to rise up and defy the mockery of the enemy and his taunts so that we can be exactly where and how God wants us to be. We can sit back in fear, but the Bible says that the fear of man brings a snare. We can wallow in self-pity, if only people knew how difficult things were for me. Or simply we can get desperate this morning, like the lepers, and just go and see what God will do for us. Don't be men or women who see it and not be a part of it. Be in the current of the stream where God is. What should we do? Withdraw? Stay here or do something different that could just save the lives of thousands of people. Let me conclude my little devotion with this. Church, this morning, we can let hate, fear, confusion, attitude, disillusion, evil, concerns of this world, all of these things, we can let them overwhelm us or we can go into the enemy's camp and take back what he has stolen from us. I declare, there is victory in the blood of Jesus. Do you remember the old course? Oh, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Oh, took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. Oh, I went to the enemy's camp and I, I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. Let's sing one more time. Oh, I went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what he stole from me. Oh, took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me, oh, I went to the enemy's camp, and I, I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet, he's under my feet, he's under my feet, he's under my feet, Satan is under my feet. Oh, listen, listen, this is wonderful, my friends. Hold on to this today. Make the right decisions. Listen to the voice of God. Let him come and minister to you and help you. Remember, Jesus is always with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. So as we stop our devotion for today, just let me encourage you. Uh, there will be some announcements that will be following on the Facebook page uh, here 
at about one o'clock or so, catch up with those. No prayer tomorrow night because of the weather. Uh, we just want to make sure everyone is safe. Uh, it's my understanding, I haven't left home to go see, but it's my understanding the parking lot's deep snow and uh, it's hard to get in there. So we just will let the snow, the rain's supposed to start sometime this afternoon. We'll let the rain do its work and we'll just stay uh, dry and safe. Uh, let me pray for you. If you have a need, would you reach out a hand towards your device? And let me just pray for you. Be an encouragement to you today as we just close our time together. Father, I just love you so much. I thank you for your wonderful and mighty hand as you minister to each and every heart in life. I pray, Lord God, that you will just minister to those that have needs today, whether it's healing in their bodies, Father Lord, whether it's just needing to be relieved from an attitude, or Father, Lord, just they don't feel your presence in their life. People may not feel you, Lord God. They may be in a desert place, a dry place. Reach down your loving hand and help them right this very moment. Be an encouragement to them, I pray. And Father, again, I just thank you for my family. I thank you for my friends. I thank you, Lord, that you're ministering in each heart and every life. I pray protection on everyone this morning. I pray, Lord God, right this very moment, that you will protect and encourage and watch over each and every person that is watching. And again, I give you thanks and praise for this day. And again, let your glory shine in every heart. In Jesus' most wonderful name, amen and amen. God bless you. If you have a need or you need help with anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. Remember, Pastor Nick tells us every week, let us be in contact with one another, be an encouragement to one another. And again, bless you this day. Stay safe and dry. God bless my family. Hope to see you soon.